Well, first of all, good afternoon, Sarah. Number one. Number two, as you said at the beginning, that the CBD category in the whole beverage industry is about a $40 billion industry. The whole craft beer industry is about a $20, $25 billion industry. So there's a lot of ground to pick up here, and there's a lot of new consumers. And if you look at this, the soda industry, it's declining about 7% each year. And we're our soda drinkers. They're going to be drinking drinks that are infused with CBD, THC, et cetera. And listen, one of the reasons we bought Sweetwater to be in that industry, you know, to go out there and sell beer, to go out there and sell CBD drinks, one day THC drinks, and, you know, have the infrastructure and the distribution to do that. Has anybody made any headway on this, or when there are all these these big growth projections, like 14 billion in the next few years for for CBD beverages? But we've seen partnerships: ABM, Bev, and Tilray, for instance, Constellation, and Canopy Growth, Coors, and Hexo. Ha, has anybody actually had any hits and any mainstream products? You know, it's a good question, and I think you know tomorrow supposedly Schumer and Booker are supposed to come out with you know, their first act in regards to what they want to see legalization looks like. So I think important part is, hey, what happens with legalization, number one? You know, there's a lot of confusion out there with CBD and drinks and which states it's legal, which states it's not. But I think, again, we're moving in the right direction. 93% of Americans want cannabis legalized. 93% of Americans want to be able to buy drinks with either THC or CBD. So there's just a lot of unknown out there, but the demand is there. But no, I think there's been a lot of partnerships out there, Sarah, but has anybody, you know, hit the ball out of the park yet? No. Who will be the first? It will be Tilray, because, you know, we do have sweet water. Um, we know about consumer products. We're going to go out there and build brands. We've just launched our Broken Coast brand, which is our first brand out of our Canadian cannabis, you know, group that we're launching here in the U.S. in a beer. So I'm looking at the stock chart next to you. Amazing run up so far this year. Obviously, there was a lot of enthusiasm around the deal, but it's dropped 18 percent over the last month. Do you think it's the concerns about the Canadian market and, and what's going on there when it comes to pricing pressures and market share? So I think, you know, listen, the Canadian market is now open. Canada was closed since November. And just in regards to sales in Canada, in regards to sales, you know, in regards to Europe. But listen, there's a lot of piped up demand. And with that, I think there's just, with these two companies coming together, they came together May 1st, we're integrating these, we have one management team in place, we've already achieved close to $35 million in synergies, a lot has happened in regards to pulling these companies together. And, you know, by size, you know, we're the largest in the world today with the infrastructure that we have in Europe and Canada, and with our beverage business and our hemp business in the U.S. Listen, I think a lot will change depending on what comes out of the Schumer, you know, Booker bill. And with that, I'm going to continuously look at where other, you know, acquisitions that we're going to look at doing both in the consumer area, both in the beverage area, and looking at where else we can do acquisitions in Europe in the medical area, which I think is a big opportunity out there. Is that why you're asking shareholders to increase the number of, of authorized shares of common stock at the upcoming shareholder meeting. I'm, I'm wondering, it's, it's such a, it's like the playbook of AMC because you've embraced the retail investor and now you want to increase shares to do deals. Well, first of all, we did a reversed merger with Tilray. And at the end of the day, we had very few shares left. So we're going out to ask our investors um, to agree to increase our, our shares, out, outstanding shares outstanding. And that is to do future acquisitions. And, uh, to grow the company, no different than a Tesla has done, no different than an ABI has done. And, you know, a company with the growth and the opportunities, it's important that we have shares to go out there and do deals. And, you know, with that, we were basically left with no shares after the merger, you know, of a free and Tilray. Got it, got it. And you said you're looking forward to the Schumer Booker layout tomorrow. Have your expectations changed on timing for legalization in this country? Listen, I think something happens in the next 24 months, and there's a lot. Listen, wow. I think in regards to what could happen in Congress, what could happen in the House, what could happen in the next election, I think it's important out there. But again, I come back and say voters are out there saying we want some type of legalization. Ninety three percent of Americans you know, say we want legalization of cannabis. You know, it's legalized today in over 35 states, whether it's adult use or medical. 
So, I mean, it's about time that we get on with it. What it does in regards to each state, what it does for tax dollars, and what it does for clearing up a lot of the confusion out there will be tremendous, you know, for users. And I think, Sarah, the big mm -hmm. thing is one of the toughest jobs I have to do is go out there and educate consumers what's the good attributes of cannabis and why cannabis is good for you for a medical standpoint, from adult use. And it's not bad to be, you know, enjoying indulging cannabis. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.